Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, it's not over until Elohim, the God of heaven, says so. Don't let anything beat you down. Satan has not got right to beat you down. Principalities and powers have not got right to beat you down. There's a way out of every situation. You see, the enemy must have thought he had succeeded to get us not able to share the word, not able to teach on the kingdom church. But the Lord made a way. Uh, you know, he like my son has done some work on the um, laptop. And here we are to bring you chapter 21 of the Kingdom Church Second Edition, just as we did chapter 20 before in the morning. Now, chapter 21 is Profile of the Kingdom Church. We're going to share with you something interesting. We are going to share with you what the concept, the definition and meaning of church and the definition and meaning of kingdom, and then we match the two concepts and from there, we go on, and that will now serene us into a realm where we will now get in and zoom in and into God's purpose in betting the kingdom church. Stay tuned and listen carefully. Father in heaven, by your spirit, we ask you to just take hold of this vessel and bring forth the mind of the Father. Bring forth the will that you establish before the foundation of the world. Have your way and let your name be glorified. Let Yeshua be exalted by the power of your spirit. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I know there are a lot of exotic concepts about kingdom and people band it around and go to make all kinds of claims. And, you know, some of them sound interesting, but Looking at the Bible, remember we said that this teaching is going to be Bible-based. It's going to also be inspired by Holy Spirit. What is the kingdom? Let's summarize the short answer. The kingdom is a realm of governance of Elohim. Short answer. Long answer. As the creator of heaven and earth, he, Elohim, is the ultimate authority over all his creation. However, and this is interesting. The Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit committed all authority to the personality known as Yeshua or Jesus in English so that he reigns supreme over all creation. And this is interesting. And I'll give you a few scriptures that will help you to for this to sink in. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul said, By the Spirit unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Wow. This is an assignment given to Paul. We're going to talk about Paul later on in this study. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 12, he said, Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, take note of this, verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and is before all things, and by him all things consist. And that's why Paul, again, speaking by the Spirit, wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 3, 16, and said, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to glory. Brothers and sisters, this is awesome. The above has been made possible. That is to say, the supreme 
handover of all authority to Yeshua is being made possible through the incarnation so that his authority and rulership extends to the three realms, heaven, the earth, and under the earth, that is to say even hell. Men and brethren, that is the import of the scripture in the book of Philippians chapter 2 about him from verse 5 to 11 that he did not clutch at his being God but emptied himself of his glory, was made of no reputation. And then as a human being during the incarnation, he went to the cross in obedience to the plan of the Father and after going to the cross and he was buried, the Father did something miraculous. He was God in heaven, then he emptied himself of himself and functioned on earth as a human, but then with the power of the Holy Spirit, he took authority over nature and lived above nature on earth. And then when he died, they put his body in the grave. He also went to exert authority and took away the king that Satan, the king that Satan used to hold man in bondage, that key he had, he took it away. So he becomes Elohim. He becomes powerful enough that in heaven or earth under the earth, he reigns supreme as God. So the authority that Elohim has over all creation has been given to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. This is a mystery. And we're going to see something about this mystery. Then number two, let's look at the church. The church is the entirety of the body of saints who collectively constitute his bride. He paid the bride price for the church at the cross of Calvary and will consummate the union at the marriage supper of the Lamb as in Revelation 19, 6-9. Yeshua himself, Jesus, established, owns, and is building his church. Those who are part of it, that is the church, are those who receive a revelation of his divinity, which only the Father can provide, as a carnal mind cannot comprehend spiritual things. Now, wait, let's look at Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said unto him, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, some Jeremiah, or some one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But, but whom say ye that I am? Verse 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Messiah, that is to say the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, the manifestation of the God of heaven. That's what it means, the Son of the living God, the incarnation of the God in heaven. And he, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Men and brethren, this is important. The, the revelation was received by the Father to Peter. Why? Matthew 11, 27, all things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man, no man, capital N-O, no man knoweth the son, but the father. And neither knoweth any man the father, but save the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. This is so important, brothers and sisters, we need to get it and get it and get it until we get it. That nobody can know Yeshua except the Father reveals him. Otherwise, you'll be looking at that baby, the manger. You'll be looking at that Jewish man. You'll be looking at that man that was just 33 and a half years. You'll be looking at the son of Joseph. You'll be looking at the carpenter. You'll be looking at Mary, the mother. You'll be looking at his four brothers. You'll be looking at his uh, a minimum of two sisters. It's only when the Father gives you a revelation that this, this blood, 
that was shed is not the blood of a prophet or a man man this is the blood of the god man and if you put your faith in it you are saved that revelation is what leads to people to be saved so the church was activated in acts 2 as we saw in the previous chapter through the present work of the holy spirit as his body the church at both the individual and corporate levels is infused with the person and power of the same Holy Spirit who empowered him, Yeshua, at the baptism of John. It's important we understand the very, the very, the very spirit that came upon Yeshua at the baptism of John is the very spirit that we are promised that we will receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon us. It doesn't matter who you are, your age, your gender, it doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It is possible for us to receive that same power that Yeshua had. Why? The plan of the Lord is that the individual members of his body, the church, are all to be temples of Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not. That ye are the temple of, of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Don't you know? Don't you know you are the temple? Then in 1 Corinthians 6 15, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, says he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Then he went on to say, hey, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit again. And Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Men and brethren, he said, you receive power. After the person of Holy Spirit comes, unfortunately, many people, some sex have just made it about tongues and tongues and tongues. And in the process, they forget the person and power of Holy Spirit. And he's not there because they are not looking for him. What you look for is what you get. If you just want to rattle tongues to impress people that oh, you want to impress people, you rattle tongues, you impress people, but there's no power, no power over sin, no power to do exploits in the kingdom, no power to expand the kingdom, no power to preach the gospel, no boldness, no power to do some things extraordinary. The greater works Yeshua promised to his church, you are not able to excise it, then what use is it with just rattling in tongues? So men and brethren, Yeshua uses those that are empowered and led by the Holy Spirit to be instruments of guiding the brethren to understand their identity as members of the holy family of Elohim, citizens of the kingdom of Elohim, and the royal priesthood. So when you look at 1 Peter 2, 9, then you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You should show for the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Brothers and sisters, what is the Lord trying to tell us? It is so that we don't get into, we don't fall victims of this you know, inability of people to truly understand the kingdom. Neither understand the church and then they begin to talk, sound off. And yet the Bible is there. Men and brethren, the church is a phase in the kingdom. In a sense, the church is dated in a sense. So unlike the kingdom, which has been eternity past, and will be till eternity future, the governance of Elohim in all eternity. You know what? The church has a dated, active phase of manifestation. It was originally conceived in the mind of Elohim when the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, so that those redeemed by his blood will collectively become an agency of the kingdom in the air dream, called to show for his glory both as individuals and as a collective. When was the lamb slain? Before the foundation of the world. 
And when were we chosen? Ephesians 1, 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, who has, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Brothers and sisters, this is interesting. So the kingdom church, therefore, is the one single indivisible entity which Yeshua founded and built in the earth rim based on a revelation of his divine identity and kingdom purpose. As he told Peter, it's not flesh and blood that gave you this revelation that I'm not just a, a, a prophet. I'm not just another person. I am the son of the living God. I'm manifestation of God in human form. The kingdom church is the only agency with the capacity to understand the king, as we have said here, he understand the kingdom and it is on full assignment to become the instrument for manifestation of the glory of the king in the earth dream. And brothers and sisters, it can only be received by grace, the revelation. For 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says to us that the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. You cannot know the things of the kingdom if you are not knowing it by the Spirit of God revealing to you the mind of the Father. That's why a lot of people grow up in darkness. A lot of people go and construct their fertile imagination. They call it kingdom. Like those who say, don't preach Jesus. Preach the kingdom. Preach the power of the kingdom. The glory of the kingdom. The, the justice of the kingdom. Preach all those things. Not the, you know, not the king. Not Yeshua. Brothers and sisters, can you imagine that? It was intellectual mind constructed something. But the Bible says first, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, No man speaking by the speaking by the Spirit of God, call it Jesus accursed. He is the king of the kingdom. He is the center and circumference of the kingdom. The kingdom is his. The glory is his. The power is his. So, brothers and sisters, don't let anybody deceive you with words. Words from fertile imagination. The things of the Spirit are received by the Spirit. Nobody knows Jesus except whom the Father reveals him to. And the Lord wants us to know the kingdom church is what we're now going to get into. We're going to get to see the profile of the man the Lord used more than any other human being to explain the kingdom church and to explain how we ought to operate. And we're talking about Paul the Apostle and some people are abusing him and insulting him. And brothers and sisters, we are going to see the role of this man in being used by the Lord to give us a revelation of the kingdom church. So we don't go into all this exotic thing and the other people say, oh no, the kingdom is now, it's now, everything now. Let's go and possess the kingdom. Oh, we have been prepared for heaven for too long. Now let us go and take over the world. That is one of the erroneous doctrines that is actually derailing the faith of many. They say, let's go and take the mountains of society. If we take the mountains, then we establish the kingdom. Go and be governor. Go and be president. We establish the kingdom. And then they are saying, in effect, don't wait for the return of Yeshua. Don't prepare for his return. Brothers and sisters, as we told you in the previous lesson, the kingdom has three dimensions. Kingdom within. Or kingdom now is kingdom within. When the king of kings rules in our hearts. Kingdom nation. All of us. All of us whom the king is ruling in their heart, irrespective of where we are based, what continent, what nation, we are one kingdom nation. He is the God. He rules over all of us as king of kings. And that's what Ephesians chapter 4 wants us to know. We have one father, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit binding us all. He say we should endeavor to have the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And that can only come when we know the truth as stated in the Holy Bible, not going outside the Bible to take the imaginations of men. And then the third dimension is kingdom come. When Jesus returns, only those who have him in their heart and who stay faithful to the end 
and who recognize that we are one kingdom nation and make put their hand on the plow and do the work for which he redeemed them, only them can wait for his return. Because you know what we are told in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, 27, 28, that he's going to appear to those who are earnestly looking up to him. Brothers and sisters, let's get this thing piece by piece. The Lord is releasing the truth to us. He wants us to walk in the fullness of revelation of truth and the glory of the Lord will be made manifest to us. We're going to stop here for today, but by way of assignment, please, number one, please share five core things you learned from this chapter. Two, which Bible passage is cited offer you the most insight? If you want the teaching notes, please send us a, a, an inbox, a direct message, and we're going to send you the teaching notes because the enemy cannot prevent us from learning. No matter what he does, he cannot prevent us. But we are even excited in the spirit because we now have finally identified the configuration of the equipments we need and the orders for the first phase has begun and listing by the grace of the Lord we're going to be back on video soon, but rather than being shut down, let's receive the revelation of truth. Please share the video, encourage other people to share it, and let's make sure that the enemy does not shut down the voice of the Most High. Brothers and sisters, can you stretch your hand where you are? Let me pray for you right now. Father in heaven, thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here with us in this class, who are listening, who are receiving the revelation of truth. I pray that in a special way you visit everyone. Open eyes of understanding. Grant your people the grace to embrace your truth and let your truth set your people free. Let your people walk in the dimension of the identity so that you can use everyone according to your eternal purpose. You can use everyone to fulfill the present assignment of the kingdom church that your name will be honored and glorified have your way, O oh Lord. Thank you for the equipment that is being used right now. And thank you for the ones that are coming. And Lord, we bless you as we look forward that very soon the video will be back and you will do what only you can do. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same of nigerian time and you is either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.